Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Freedom Rides. And we're fortunate to have with us a participant in the uh, Freedom Rides in uh, 1961, uh, Mr. Matthew Walker, Jr. And of course, Mr. Matthew uh, Walker, Jr., let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Thank you, Dr. Haney, and thank you for this opportunity to talk about the Freedom Rides. And thank you uh, for the privilege of being able to uh, talk to a participant uh, in the uh, Freedom Rides. As a matter of fact, um, uh, uh, Mr. Walker, I think we might say that a large number of people might not really have any real idea of what we're talking about when we talk about uh, the uh, freedom rides and uh, sit-ins and whatnot and the courage that it took for individuals like yourself and others to become a part of this. Let's start off, uh, Mr. Walker, by having you to talk about your background, uh, your education, and a little information uh, and some of the things that eventually motivated you to become involved in this sit-in movement and then uh, we'll talk about the Freedom Rise and during our next second segment we'll give you an opportunity to give a full explanation of the uh, rise. But first let's talk about you and your background and motives and etc. Uh, well Dr. Haney, I guess if we're talking about my background I can mention the fact that I was fortunate to be born into a family where uh, there was never any want for food, clothing or shelter. I had very loving parents and they saw to it that uh, we were raised well and uh, raised in an atmosphere of love mm -hmm. and with uh, what I believe to be a very uh, good set of family values. Uh, being a, <clears throat> a member of a family where, uh, as I said, there was uh, a lack of want, uh, so to speak. Uh, I realized at an early age that uh, <clears throat> it didn't make any difference as to uh, where or, or, or whatever circumstances you may have been born into. As far as the larger society was concerned, you were still thoroughly a uh, inferior person mm -hmm. because of the mores of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been uh, educated uh, to some extent, uh, several uh, colleges I've gone to and mm -hmm. right now I work professionally in uh, construction. I install uh, air conditioning systems mm -hmm. in commercial new construction. Mm -hmm. uh, I became interested in the uh, civil rights movement as it's called uh, <clears throat> largely because uh, my parents sent me to a Catholic high school here in Nashville where I uh, attended uh, this school, Father Ryan, the second year that it was integrated, which was 1955. And uh, the racial polarity which I experienced there uh, sensitized me to the issue of race and how things uh, operated in this country. So mm -hmm. when the uh, sit-in movement, civil rights movement came along, mm -hmm. I was more or less attuned to what uh, people were talking about trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me take this opportunity to clarify one thing. We often talk about the civil rights movement, and I just want to make the point that I believe the civil rights movement is a misnomer. Mm -hmm. because I believe that our civil rights were uh, gained as a result of the Civil War mm -hmm. and the subsequent amendments to the Constitution mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which changed our status from slave to citizen. Mm -hmm. I believe that the more accurate terminology for what happened in the 60s and subsequent years would mm -hmm. be a human right. rights mm -hmm. movement mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the question of human rights is more fundamental than civil rights. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the indecency of segregation, the indec indecency of being treated as an inferior being. Mm -hmm. So I'd just like to say that uh, to put a bit of a finer point on mm -hmm. it, the better term, I believe, would mm -hmm. be human rights. Struggle movement. for human rights. Struggle for human for rights, uh, civil rights rather than civil rights, and, because mm -hmm. human rights is something mm -hmm. more fundamental and mm -hmm. something which uh, is less arguable mm -hmm. as far as uh, that to which mm -hmm. all people mm -hmm. are naturally mm -hmm. entitled. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, uh, being involved in uh, 
that movement of the 1960s, mm -hmm. uh, generally referred to as the uh, Civil Rights Movement, mm -hmm. not only did you have an opportunity to see quite a bit of diversity mm -hmm. uh, from the point of view of having uh, uh, individuals that uh, had, you had never worked with before, white people, for example, yes, uh, you, you never worked with before, that would give you an expanded understanding and an expanded opportunity in terms of seeing it mm -hmm. as you now see it as uh, human rights. Yes, exactly. yes, of course. Fair, mm -hmm. Uh, there was uh, considerable diversity in those days, and uh, there have always been, uh, throughout the experience of blacks in this country, well-meaning whites, mm -hmm. and uh, they have always played a significant role, even before the Civil Rights mm -hmm. Movement, well-meaning whites were, to a large degree, uh, the reason for the success of the Underground Railroad, for Very example. Good. And of course, let me interrupt here, uh, uh, Mr. Walker, for our first commercial break, after which we'll come back. And we'll be back with you following our very, very short commercial break. The topic today.